uh, hi, uh, uh, hi, uh, and that's how I begin, uh, this, um, so, uh, I, so, we, so, speak about, um, so you had to be, uh, good for, thank you, uh, this is my podcast, and I don't, I don't have anything to say that is not outside of my perspective, obviously. Um, but you can tune in and hear me ramble on about things for 40 minutes straight. And the thing is, I keep wanting to record this. Like I, I've tried a couple times. I tried a couple times just now. And I pretty much just want to start over because like there's... I want to start over because I, I live too idealistically and like the thing that I want to say is not, is not ever perfect and I want it to be perfect and it's like, well, wouldn't that be great to just start over? Because you can, you can start over as many times as you want if you're recording a podcast, you can just keep doing it and it's really lucrative option when uh, you feel like you screwed up and it's just like, oh, wow, I could start over and then make it sound perfect, make it sound great. And uh, and it's never going to sound that great, but uh, at least you can just be yourself, right? Be yourself, 2020. Don't. Don't be yourself, 2020. That's, I think that's Bernie's slogan. Don't be yourself, 2020. Feel the burn again. Vroom. 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 And four vrooms. Bernie. Feel the burn. Four vrooms. Not particularly funny. Um... So the thing is, I keep wanting to record it, and I really am excited to just record 40 minutes of this so that I can be done with it. But the topic is undefinability, so I'll talk about undefinability at least briefly. But I realize that any time that I want to talk about undefined, like when I try to record it and talk about undefinability, um, I get into this mode where I gotta like say it all really well and speak my points very coherently and um then i end up and then i screw up and then like i stop and like oh no that wasn't coherent and then so like uh i get in my head about it <clears throat> so then uh while while recording while on the same recording um then i keep like trying to start over from where i last screwed up and the more that I say it over and over again, the more stale it becomes to me. And the more I'm just like, God, I'm sick of saying this. And it sounds worse and worse. Like it sounds worse and worse every time I try to restart just because it feels stale to me. Because it's not, it's not coming through clear if I'm, just re if I'm just repeating what I just said to try to do it over again, but do it better. But... The whole point of a podcast is to be unfiltered. And I know that. The whole point of a podcast, the whole direction of entertainment is to be unfiltered right now in 2020. Like if it is filtered in any way, it is less and less popular. But that's just, that's the way that things go anyway. Like... The more that time goes on, like, the youth in every generation value realness more and more. They value genuineness. And it's not so much that they value, like, they would naturally value it because they strip down the authority. They strip down the, the authorities and, like, rules and borders that prohibited realness from happening before. For example, um, like 90s and 2000s, 
uh, I and everybody was subjected to a billion movies that were exactly the same hour and a half to two hour format. And um, now, like 2020, as long as as long as people don't have to go through Hollywood and do this whole big thing like and and that hour and a half to two hour movie could only come out of Hollywood. But as long as people don't have to go through Hollywood, like there aren't all these barriers to entry because any small time filmmaker can make a film that's like an hour and that's considered just as good a film as one that's an hour and a half. Because right now there's no format of a movie that is better than any other format because all of them are available. And they're all available because all the people that like to make different lengths of movie are able to share their content on all these different platforms that are now available through the internet. And, um, so because of that, like you used to have these borders, you used to have like the film had to be an hour and a half that time frame, and the borders are around that time frame, or hour and a half to two hours. But basically those borders are, more and more extinct so that it doesn't it can be anywhere from microscopic to macroscopic now like you're not you're probably not going to make a 10-hour movie but um but that's the thing if you're going to make something that's 10 hours it's probably not a movie anymore it's like it's probably called something else it probably fits a different definition so the so the definition movie like the full extent of its borders is probably like one minute to seven hours or something but we are able to realize the full extent of of its borders and and understand and view any movie that uh occupies any time frame within the one minute to seven hours because any one of those is a movie and we and all of them are available to us now because we have all these less fewer barriers to entry because the internet uh gives gives us all a lot of freedom um, so that is, that is, uh, mildly interesting, but, uh, and what was I talking about? I said, for example, and then I brought up the movies and that there are fewer barriers to entry and that the borders around the format for movies. Yeah. And really just like you used to watch Spider-Man and like the way that they would set up a scene they might have a couple actors come out and say something like a couple extras come out and say something totally unnecessary just to set up the scene just to say oh the scene is beginning and so that's something that's totally unnatural in comparison to real life that like that kind of stuff is more and more taken out of movies but it that it happens that way all the time uh like movies and film and entertainment are always striving to be more real and uh, more relatively truthful. They're more relatively truthful. And uh, that that is how music evolves. Music evolves because it is more relatively truthful all the time. Um, and it's more relatively truthful because the music that changes the state of music that evolves music that is the most influential and transcendental um, is music that oh, fuck you know like you're gonna be interesting even if you forget, like, you're going to be the same person, even if you forget what you're going to say. You're going to be the same person no matter what. You're going to be the same person, like, it's always you in front of people, even if you don't come across genuinely. Like, uh, even if you are, you like, all the words coming out of your mouth are, like, you feel like aren't representational of you, like, you feel like you're being fake all the time. And you wish that you would be more real. If you feel that way, like it's always you in front of people, no matter what. And you can't escape from that is the truth of the matter. It's just like impossible to understand that truth. 
because to understand that truth, you would have to view yourself objectively, and that's impossible. Because if you were able to view yourself objectively, you would see that there's this set of characteristics that's coming through all the time that's like that's inescapable that you are that are that you cannot escape from like there's a set of characteristics that comes through all the time no matter what of whether you're being fake or real and um like there's certain things about yourself that you can't change and there's also things like you have limitations and you're not able to see them you don't understand your own limitations. That's why they're your limitations. You don't see the ends of the borders of your identity. You know with you know the within of your identity. You know subjective you know subjective space and subjective space is the space within your identity. Objective space is a space without your identity. Uh meaning like that's where it starts that uh that you could possibly be viewed objectively is only without your identity or outside of the borders of your identity. Um, and so now, and this brings me to uh, undefinability at least a little bit, but uh, identity is a concept that I talk about no matter what, or it's not that I talk about, I don't ever talk about anything like this. Uh, that's why you start a podcast so you can say whatever. Um, but I like that, like, uh, I just want to find what I, like, in the moment feel is interesting to talk about. And in the moment, it's interesting for me to think about that you always come through. Like, you, you, the way that you appear and, like, what you say, the stuff that you say like you can't escape from the fact that your physical form and the language that you communicate, like the way that you actualize yourself for other people to see and view and define and take you in. Um, like the way that you communicate yourself is always the defining element of you and your identity. And that carries through every point in time that you live every single day that you live no matter what you can't escape from yourself <laughs> you can't escape from yourself whatever um yeah but i'm saying that in relation to like i forgot a point that i was going to say and maybe i'll leave it in just because you're just to be because that's what people find interesting like it's not like people think that People wouldn't think it was more that much more interesting if I actually got the point across because I'll probably get the point across in some different way later on as long as I talk long enough or make enough podcast episodes. Like you don't have to worry about getting anything exactly right <laughs> like law of large numbers. You don't really have to worry about getting anything exactly right as long as you make a ton of content, as long as you have enough stamp like the greater the sample size, the more people realize what the true average is of your identity, like what the, what it comes back to, because the true average is, is what you're trying to communicate anyway, sort of like, but you want to expand on it and communicate the intricacies of your character. Everybody do, everybody do want communicate intricacies they character everybody um everybody does and 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 so as long as you just sit in front of a microphone and just spout some shit for 40 minutes and you have a big enough vocabulary people are going to be like oh probably no and i say have a big enough vocabulary by that i just mean you're able to keep talking <laughs> as long as you're able to keep talking i am able to keep talking so i but um but so so undefinability relates to some things 
that I like to speak about. And it's like whenever I have the conversation with somebody, whenever I get the opportunity to talk about something abstract, like undefinability, I get all like exact about it because I know that I don't get the opportunity very often to have this conversation. And it's like I have to really explain that this is important to me or something like that. But uh, it would be better if I just exp- <laughs> if I just talked about it more often and talked about it more clearly. Well, I mean that I gave myself enough time and had enough patience with myself to communicate myself rather than hold myself to the expectation of communicating it correctly like the one time that I get the chance. You know, you and so you got to give yourself a break. But uh, so that's... That's part of it too. You got to give yourself a break. And um, my dog. Um, But so I'm really, really skirting around why I titled this undefinability, like what's interesting about that. What's interesting about undefinability is that it's a, it's an idea that exists outside of the realm of definability, meaning that it exists outside of the realm of definition. So you're only able to speak in things that are defined. And every like every word that you say is a defined instance and exists within the realm of definability. And the realm of definability is something like the collective body of knowledge of humanity. Like if you're going to talk about the realm of definability for the entire world, it's like everything that humans have ever come to define. It's our collective body of knowledge. In order for something to exist within humanity's collective body of knowledge, they would have to define that thing. Now, until they defined it, it existed undefinably, meaning it existed outside of the realm of definition. But uh, upon defining, like you define the word carousel, all of a sudden, you have this exact one out of infinite things that exists that didn't exist before called the carousel. And it's some, it's like, it's an accumulation of a number of different, of a number of different ideas. Like, because you have to have horses, you have to have motion, you have to have circles, you know, it's a collection of all these things, of all these other ideas, uh, combined into one thing. So you had to, like humanity had to along the line be able to define all these other things before they were able to define carousel. So at the point that a carousel was invented, it was like this, it was a specification of language. It was a more specified definition that was and a more complex definition that came as the result of an accumulation of all these other definitions from the past. So it was, so when somebody defined it, it was like this, it was an idea that somebody had to build in their mind. They had to understand how this thing operated in their, in their mind, meaning that they had to combine all these definitions and create a new definition that hadn't existed before. And to create a new definition that hasn't existed before, you have to put borders around an idea and putting borders around an idea, I would argue is the same thing as making something infinite into something finite, meaning that you put borders around it. You make it so that it has a place where it ends. Uh, because as long as it existed as an idea, it just existed ethereally and it existed infinitely and it existed undefinably and it existed in the unknown. Um, so that's significant for one because <clears throat> significant for one because uh, if you're discussing the idea on undefinability, you're discussing with defined words something that is undefinable. Um, so in discussing the idea on undefinability, I want to ask the question like. Are there concepts greater than definition? Meaning, are there ways of describing things and commun like at the point that you are able to define the word undefinability, you are starting to say that it's possible to define something. Like if you can define undefinability actually, 
like write it in a formula or something. Um, then you're starting to say that definition exists, like communicating things. There's a way of communicating things other than uh, through defined instances where a defined instance disting distinguishes exactly one thing out of infinite other possible things. Um, so undefinability describes abstractness, but, uh, so, so, um, and you're not able to communicate abstractness and that's why it's abstract. For example, um, numbers blow. For example, numbers are abstractions. Like a four is an abstraction, and it's a, an abstraction because four is represented in everything that can be counted four times, which is pretty much everything. Pretty much everything that has been defined, unless it's like a verb or something like that. You can't have four running, but verbs just operate in a different medium than nouns do. But if it's a noun, it's like uh, pretty much always possible that you can have four manifestations of that noun and you can get to four. But anyways, four is represented in anything that can be counted four times. So because of that, it's an abstraction because it is relative to and within and intersectional to everything that gets to four. And so you don't really have a way of visualizing that besides that Besides that four is basically in everything. So four is an abstraction. So you don't really have a way of defining four. And um, like as far as philosophy is concerned, there are a few different arguments for what a number is, but nobody's right. Like there isn't a consensus opinion on what a number is because numbers are abstractions, but we don't really have ways of defining abstractions. We don't have ways of defining the undefinable and something that is an abstraction is undefinable. It's undefinable because it is within everything that it represents. Um, um, for example, the word human is undefinable as far as all humans are concerned as far as every manifestation of human which is and every manifestation of human includes the entire body of humanity it it uh it uh, constitutes the entire definition of humanity as far as humanity has been defined up until the present now humanity can have infinite other manifestations of human that haven't existed and those manifestations also exist within the definition humanity but they do not constitute humanity up until the present but uh so you look at the word human in the dictionary and um the word human in the dictionary is undefinable as far as humans are concerned all humans are concerned because uh there is no human on earth that is intersectional to every single other human that's ever existed first of all Every human on earth is an individual and therefore doesn't transcend the borders of any other individual human because those borders are specific to each human um, and are they're, they're definitive of that human's character, the borders that um, define a human's identity. But uh, so you can look at it that every single human that's ever existed is a definite is a manifestation of the word human and exists somewhere in that definition. And it's like a dot somewhere within a giant space that has, that is bordered off. But as long as it's a giant space that's bordered off, the, the space is infinite because you can make it as microscopic as you want to. You can go further and further into it and you can, uh, there can be humans that are born that are manifestations of the word human that exist between two dots or two other humans that already existed and you can bridge the gap between any two two humans um that existed as much as much as possible you can do it infinitely and by bridge the gap i mean you can have a human that is like near nature to two humans but somewhere in between them like it's a gap that is bridged between them um you can have infinitely many humans that exist as slightly differently from uh any other human that's ever been born. Um, but more importantly, the word human 
as it stands in the dictionary is undefinable to all humans because it is intersectional to all of them, meaning it is it's the most representational manifestation of human. Uh, so the most representational manifestation is just the word on a page, literally. It's just the letters because every single human can be found in the word human, especially human as it's laid out in the dictionary with its definition attached to it because the definition tells you exactly what it is and why it's distinguished. Um, so every single human can be found in the word human and the word human transcends the borders of every individual human and every group that humans have ever created. It, it, it transcends and eclipses the borders of any culture or country or, you know, human group ever made because it is representational of all of them. Now, no human can ascend to those heights and be relative to every single other human that's ever existed. The only human that can do that is the word human as it appears on a page. And so that word is, um, that word is undefinable. It's the most undefinable manifestation of, of humans. It's the most undefinable. And because it is the most undefinable, it is, um, it is like in some ways the most transcendental, but I wouldn't say that, but it is the most relative. It is relative to every single other human in every group. It's the most relative element of humans is just the word on a page. And it works that way for any definition for a computer, the most representational computer and representational I'm saying is interchangeable with undefinable, uh, the most representational, uh, undefinable, most relative, most intersectional, most archetypal. Uh, manifestation of computer is the word computer as it appears on a page and especially as it appears with its definition attached because the definition tells you why it's distinguished. Um, so the most representational computer is the word computer. The most representational anything is the word as defined. But uh, so you look at, you look at back at the word human, um, the word human is undefinable and the most abstract too. That's another way you would describe it. It's the most abstract human because it is, because it is the most representational human and every human can see themselves in that word. Um, and you should try to say something logical and use the same word over and over and over again, as much as I do. That's what you should aim to do in life. If you keep using one example, and then you say the same word 1000 times in two minutes. Congratulations. You did it. And apparently that's a standard that I ascribe to subscribe, whatever I ascribe, I ascribe to that standard. Um, but so humans, and so the reason that human, the word on the page is the most undefinable human, uh, besides for everything that I just explained. And besides that, it's the most abstract human, um, is because every other human's realm, the extent of any other human's authority does not transcend the authority of the word human on a page. And that's what makes the word human on a page, the most undefinable manifestation of human. And in that sense, since it is the most undefinable, it wins the competition. It's at the top. That's why it's also, you could also describe it as the most archetypal. It's like the manifestation from which all other manifestations of human descend from. And by descend from, you're implying that all the other manifestations of human are below it. And they, they are below it. They sit interconnected below its jurisdiction because the most undefinable element of any group or any definition, the most undefinable manifestation is always the, is always the leader and is always the winner. And it's always the winner because the extent of all the other manifestations authorities do not transcend the authority of the most undefinable element of a group. They don't. Um, because the most undefinable element is able to, because every other element is definable. It's definable, meaning that it has borders around it. It is subject to some sort of authority. 
And so all the elements that are more definable than the most undefinable element, which are which is every single element that isn't undefinable, um, all of those elements are subject to the authority of the most undefinable. The most undefinable has the greatest expansion of author of borders around everything else. Um, because really, to the other elements, the the leader of the group w is always the most undefinable. It's really the point that I'm making. The leader of the group is always the most undefinable because the leader of the group is able to define every single other element of the group. And it's like, at least to some extent, they're relative to it enough. They see themselves in it enough that they are able to define it. If you're the most undefinable, you are the least, your patterns are the least detectable. If you're the leader, you're the winner of a competition, you are the, you are the most undefinable. Take the NFL, for example. Um, like we live in the age where everybody talks about like who has the best offensive mind. Like there's these offensive and defensive geniuses walking around because we finally realized that a lot of the influence of who wins and who doesn't comes from the coaches. And so we started to place a lot of focus on the head coach. And now we're descending even further than that. And looking at all the offensive and defensive coordinators It's like more and more that we know every team's offensive and defensive coordinators name, at least like we haven't arrived there yet, but it is more and more that way compared to 10 years ago, we were not focusing that much on the offensive and defensive coordinators. We were somewhat, but so you have all these great offensive minds running around. And um, the reason that those people are so interesting and so valuable, like Lincoln Riley or Sean McVay, um, is because they are ahead of all the rest of the competition. They're, they're more undefinable than, than the other head coaches and other defensive and offensive coordinators. They're more undefinable, meaning that when the other defensive coordinators look at what Lincoln Riley and Sean McVay are doing, um, they're not able to detect their patterns. They're not able to define or communicate enough to say what's going on with them to be able to stop them. So, so because they can't define them, they can't stop them. They, they're less, they're relatively less able to stop them, um, than, than the other way around. Uh, and that's because the people who are offensive minded geniuses, are have transcended the authority of all the other, of all other defensive coordinators like the authority of the of their opponents their of the defenses that they're facing is not great enough to contain them and because of that they are so they're more undefinable and the patterns that they put out are less detectable but eventually their patterns will be detectable so really if you're an offensive minded genius an important part of that is your ability to adapt and change. And that's really what the NFL is doing all the time. Anyway, the NFL is always changing. The offensive and defenses are always changing and coming up with new plays and you see the game evolve. And especially in the sense, like the last five years, the game has really evolved in the area of these like short passes and lots of shorter crossing routes. Um, and a lot of times they're influenced by college first, like the college college influences the NFL but sometimes there's stuff that works in college that doesn't work in the NFL or whatever. But the game is always evolving. It's always changing. And in order to be an offensive-minded genius, you have to change with the game. You have to stay ahead of the competition enough and come up with new things all the time so that your patterns don't get stale. If your patterns get stale, then you're not good at your job in the NFL now, especially now, because things really change more and more rapidly and you have to you have to stay the, ahead of the game because the winner is always the one that uh is the most confusing is the one that is like you don't know what they're going to do um because if you're able to be outside of the authority of other defenses and fool them and then you're you're the winner the winner is the one who's the most undefinable that's how you that's how you compete like even the talent on the field, the talent on the field, the most talented people are the most undefinable people because they have talent that transcends what we're even able to speak about or describe. They have talent that transcends the talent of other people. Like if you have Derrick Henry and he, you have Derrick Henry and he just runs over people. He has, he has a talent that is not definable, meaning that when defenses go to tackle him, they don't even know how to tackle him. They're not able to. His talent transcends their talent. They're not able to do it 
because their their talent and their mentality and their identity, like everything that they are capable of does not transcend what Derrick Henry is capable of. And Derrick Henry is capable of more because his talent is more indescribable and it is more above other people's talent. It's a talent that we, that we haven't seen and a talent that other defenses don't even know how to prepare for, apparently, especially if you're in the playoffs and he's run 180 yards two games in a row and he does the same thing a third game in a row in the playoffs when you're when Tennessee's entire offense is their running game and there's still people don't have any way of stopping him it's because he has a transcendent undefinable talent like uh we don't even there's no yeah they can't the defenses don't uh, have a game plan to stop him whatever uh so even the talent on the field so like so that combines like the talent on the field, but especially then the coaches that are manipulating the talent on the field. Um, ultimately, the team that is most undefinable and executes most undefinably is the winner. Now you can be like you can have the potential to be the most undefinable and still not be the winner. That's possible too. Like if you don't execute on your patterns correctly, so like that's why you'd need to practice or whatever. But in a sense, you're practicing in order to in order to be the most undefinable that you can be. So you also have to live up to your potential, but you, uh, an important part of it is having the potential to live up to in the first place. And, and, uh, yeah, whatever. Pretty. So like the leader is the most undefinable. So that's another really interesting and significant thing about the idea of undefinability. But, uh, the leader is the most undefinable because that which is undefinable and now i'm talking about undefinability as the idea so like undefinability objectively like that which is undefinable and i would say that it's a very very comparable like interchangeable thing to say that things that are undefinable are things that are infinite um like when you're looking at it objectively now now i used all these words for it before i said uh the most undefinable element is the most abstract the most intersectional the most relative the most archetypal um and that kind of those interchangeable descriptions of it exist for undefinability as it relates to the group or the the leader of a group because the leader of the group is relative to everybody else in the group and uh is still exists within the group but i want to talk about undefinability as an individual now and as an individual is just the idea undefinability rather than in a group rather than an individual that exists within a group because that's the undefinability i was talking about before um but so in talking about undefinability objectively uh that which is infinite or unknown or undefinable is that which is above us like the things that we haven't defined we are subject to those things we're subject to time we haven't defined time we don't know how to define it we can't zero in on time is this formula or whatever we don't have a way of defining it and because of that we are subject to its authority we are always subject to the authority of the things that are undefinable um and it would be the same thing to say that we're subject to the authority of that which is infinite for instance the earth is a finite dot and we have outer space all around us um for thousands and thousands of miles like and they haven't they haven't proven that uh outer space is infinite but it's like essentially infinite you could say as far as we know you know it's essentially infinite to us right now especially because the amount of the universe that we have ever seen is very very minuscule in comparison to the size of the universe so the universe is essentially infinite so what you have with the earth is a finite dot um, with infinite space surrounding it. And we are subject to the authority of that infinite space. We're subject to it because it entirely surrounds us. It is our authority. The only thing that we have authority over is the finite dot that is the earth. We're able to communicate things that happen on the earth and elements that exist in the earth. And we're able to specify through our language the way that different elements interact scientifically and the way that people interact and whatever. We're able to explain linguistically things that happen within the earth. We know the earth, we understand the earth. The earth is within our body of knowledge. But what's not within our body of knowledge is that which is undefinable. And that which is undefinable is that which is outside of the earth. And 
what we're subject to the authority of. We're subject to the authority of the infinite and the unknown and the undefinable. So physically, we're subject to outer space entirely. We're subject to its authority and it entirely surrounds us because that's what authority does. If it is the, because that's the authority that I'm talking about is authority that entirely surrounds you. And which is the same thing as the authority that surrounds an idea that is, that is defined, that surrounds the idea of carousel. Um, it's the same, it's the same thing. The idea of carousel is now subject to the authority of its, de of its definition. And its definition is the exact borders that surround the idea that somebody created somewhere along the line. It's an accumulation of all these other different ideas. Um, so like physically we are subject to outer space, but like also with the language that we create and the ideas, the ideas that we have the potential to make, we are subject to the authority of those also. We're subject to the authority of the things that we haven't defined yet, the things that we don't understand. We are subject to time entirely. We're entirely within it and we don't have a way of defining it. The only way that we become unsubject to it, like when we comprehend time, the point that we comprehend time is the point that we define it. It's the point that we understand what it is. Um, and uh, so that takes a lot. Who knows what that even takes, but you gotta, you gotta make a, you gotta make an equation likely, but so we're always within time. And we're always subject to its authority as long as we're within it. Um, like, and so there are things like that for us that are greater than us that we haven't defined. And those things are transcendental and supernatural. And those things are beyond what we're able to reason. And we can only imagine them. Um, but uh, optimistically you would say that we have the potential to define anything that is undefined seeing as that we convert the infinite into the finite regularly. We define new ideas all the time. So we are able to comprehend the infinite and we're able to comprehend the undefinable. And we do that by, by within our minds, putting borders around something undefinable and making it definable. Like the person that, created a table like there might have been things that looked like tables before but there's nothing that fit the exact definition table or perform the function that tables do and uh so the person that made a table like a table used to just exist as an idea before he defined it it existed in the infinite the same way everything that is undefined existed out in the ether somewhere it didn't exist and uh and so the person that made it exist understood what the borders of a table would look like in their mind and they understood what function it could perform and why it would be valuable and then they brought it they created it in the world and then presented it to the world and the world understood that the function of the table was very valuable and that it bridged some sort of some sort of important gap that didn't exist before it was like this finite instance that uh that that made life easier for us in valuable enough that like it was valuable enough that people really took to it so it was like a relatively truthful idea and people took to it and then it, it became something that everybody has everybody has a table so a table used to exist undefinably and that's the way that everything exists so in that sense like everything that exists undefinably it's kind of equal until it is defined and once it is defined then it can be seen as an individual and be distinguished for exactly what it is distinguished from everything else that exists um but what's important about somebody like they can create the borders of it in their mind and then realize those borders in the in the world like they can picture what a table would look like and what it would perform in their mind before they make it happen in the world uh that's important because everybody in their mind has the capacity to do that. So like within our brains, within our subjective identities, within our identities, we have a picture of, of what is undefinable. And, and so you can create within your mind things that don't exist. You can bring new things into the world that used to exist undefinably. 
And that really only happens gradually because the things that you can create in your mind are only ever linked to or they're connected to things that we've defined to ourselves. They're, they're connected to things that we've created and comprehended through our language already. That's why like the things that you create have to be an accumulation of previously defined instances. So the things that you the things that the world makes definable that used to be undefinable are gradual changes. They're things that are that we're, we were just on the cusp of creating and we were on the cusp of creating them because we arrived at a place where we defined enough other things in the past that we could understand an idea that is relative to and connected to all the ideas that we created in the past. So the changes that we make, the conversions of the infinite into the finite that we make are gradual ones. The same way that if we ever traverse into space, the changes we make will be gradual. We will expand our sphere of influence only gradually. Um, and uh, in doing so, we make larger and larger sections of what used to be undefinable. We make those things definable. Um, but, uh, so that's, that's important for something somewhere. Um, yeah, but so those are some things about undefinability. That's why I wanted to talk about undefinability. It's a really, it's an interesting concept, but I, maybe I talked long enough that I can just make what I have into a podcast. Uh, I don't know. Because I also want to talk about, because an important part of the podcast going forward is that, is, um, is like, uh, is a focus on that which is undefined and that which we aren't allowed to define according to rules. Because a lot of times, the undefined is well the undefined is always uh unavailable to us and that's why it's undefined because uh stuff that we would take as true like stuff that exists within rationality is stuff that we have defined and stuff that we understand on earth stuff that's within the realm of rationality is pretty much stuff that's within the realm of definability but stuff that's undefined is stuff that is ready to be created. Like things that are created don't exist already. And so they are radical in a sense. Anything that's created is radical because it's not something we've already comprehended and doesn't exist rationally. Um, so that's why like there's a, there's definitely a place for the irrational because once you get into the irrational, you get into creation. Um, but so there's there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about on the podcast, like undefinable stuff, especially in the area of mathematics, because that's my that's the area that I have a background in. Not that I'm an expert, because all I have is a bachelor's degree. And um, but what I want to talk about is just how there's mathematics is a finite body of knowledge. It's a defined body of knowledge. It's, there's a lot that goes into its definition. There's tons of different fields of mathematics and lots of, there's lots of stuff that f falls under the umbrella of the authority of mathematics and lots of really basic number related stuff. But, um, there's also a lot of this stuff with regard to numbers that is undefinable and, uh, mathematics as a body of knowledge does a lot of work to restrict you from from going outside of the rules of mathematics and to the point that like rules as posed by mathematics should never be crossed right that would be a foreign idea to say that you as a plebeian have the ability to say that there that there are rules of mathematics that shouldn't stand you're not allowed to say that you're not allowed to think that you have a better idea than a rule that's posed by the field of mathematics. But uh, the reason why you're allowed to think outside of the box of mathematics is because mathematics is a box. It's just a defined instance. And in a thousand years, the rules of mathematics, God willing, will not look anything like the rules of mathematics that we have today. And what I'm interested in is making it so that 
the focus isn't on the rules because the entire thing that I learned in my college degree was adherence to rules. It was just, you have to follow these rules. This is a rule for finding a limit. This is a rule for differentiation. And all of those rules are true. Um, but there's like, you want to think about numbers in a philosophical sense too. And you want to think about ways that you can describe what an exponent is and, and try to find out why, like if there's a better word to describe that than just a series of numbers, you know, because, or like why a, a word might be representational of a function, but you're not allowed to say those things because that just delves into lunacy. But because we exist in the world that we do now, um, there's a lot of bodies of authority that are being taken apart. For instance, celebrity. Uh, you used to, and, and Hollywood and the movies, the format of movies and the way that music used to exist and whatever, but especially celebrity, like Hollywood used to have the authority on what, on celebrity, on what it meant to be a celebrity, what you had to do to be famous. You had to go through Hollywood. So that's a really big barrier to entry that you have to move yourself to one location or in order to be the most famous, like the most famous Hollywood had the authority on that. Now their authority has been stripped away and celebrities are just people who start making videos from their home and are on YouTube. Like the real people who have influence are on Instagram or on YouTube and are, are social media influencers. Those are the people with influence. And because of that fame is sort of dead because there are tons of YouTube personalities. There's tons of people on Instagram so much so that everybody is following different people and we don't all connect through one person. And it's the same with like TV shows. We don't all connect through one TV show or one movie as much anymore because all that content is endlessly available to you and all new kinds of stuff is being created all the time. So it's not like, it's not like things roll out and everybody's like, Oh, do you see I mean, yeah, there's stuff that we connect through, but it's not, it's not the same and we'll forget about it sooner. Also, we connect through like, we're not gonna, it's not 2007 anymore where a YouTube video comes out or like 2010, probably that's a better time. 2009, like where a YouTube video comes out, like the double rainbow and everybody's seen it. And that's like the next big video. Like there's not that anymore. We're not, there's not the one big video anymore. Um, but I say that to bring up like, that's, that's a point that I'll go back to all the time, but that's just the state of the world, um, presently. But I say that to explain that the authority of celebrity has been stripped away and distributed evenly to everybody that's on social media, just to regular people, to plebeians. Um, so, so regular people uh, now have the authority to be a celebrity if they if they want to, they don't have the barriers of entry. Like they don't have to relocate to Hollywood or anything like that. Um, but, uh, I imagine that the, the world will evolve to strip down more authorities, including the authority of academia, meaning the authority of, of universities and like all this, like you have to write a scientific paper in order to move the needle of science at all. You have to write a really big math paper, philosophy paper in order for, the needle to be moved mathematically or scientifically or philosophically, like the bodies of knowledge that are philosophy, math, and science, they change very, very, very slowly because the only people that are able to change them have a ton of schooling. So there's very few people that are able to change them. So you have to have a ton of schooling in order to have the authority. You have to go through a lot in order to be somebody who has the authority the level of authority of somebody who can change math, science, or philosophy. There's only a few people that have that authority. Um, and even when they do propose new things, they are subject to a lot of rules and regulations of how you're supposed to present the paper and like how it's received. And even when it's received, uh, what's it changing? Because it's, it's not changing a lot. So the evolution of those three things is very slow, but, uh, so uh, I'm going to relate that to or explain why that's related to undefinability um, because 
Because like I was saying, that which is undefinable. So to this point, I've said a few significant things about undefinability. Um, and I want to I wanna explain a little bit about how it relates to a specific topic. And the specific topic that I'm talking about is mathematics. When mathematics is a, is a certain field of study. Um, and so because it's a because of that it's a finite body of study there's not it is limited to only things that are included in mathematics and because of that because it is finite its identity is uh its identity makes it what it is and an identity is always subject to rules and regulations and you have to follow the rules of math in order to be doing math and math has a ton of rules and um uh, but so and and one of them is for example like division by zero like if you get into higher levels of math where you're dealing with uh more calculus related stuff but really any at any point in mathematics you can try to divide something by zero or think about what it means to divide something by zero just if you put zero in the in the denominator where there's a, a numerator um of some kind and it, it could be zero too with uh with the kind of thing that i'm talking about but uh pretty much there's a rule that you can't divide by zero so you can't have zero in the denominator and that is a rule of mathematics and um if you were to look up division by zero and its explanation is given by uh wolfram math world and wolfram math world will give pretty much any mathematical term it'll explain the concept pretty well uh, and it'll summarize it. That's what Wolfram Math World does, and it will do that for pretty much any concept. It's like a math Wikipedia of sorts. And so if you look up division by zero, uh, in their short summary, they explain, first of all, that it's a rule that you can't do it, and uh, that division by zero is is undefined for real numbers. So here within mathematics, we have literally something we have a manifestation of undefinability, which is division by zero, according to mathematics. And it's not like there aren't a lot of areas where you can find anybody describing something as being undefined. But in math, you do run into that because math borders on dealing with undefinability. But in general, nobody can really deal with undefinability because you because it requires definition and everything that we say and communicate is predicated on definition. Um, so they talk about division by zero on, on one of their page and they, pages and they explain that uh, pretty much the title for that is undefined. And then they go on to say that to the persistent but misguided reader who insists on asking what happens if I do divide by zero? What happens if I do divide by zero that... Uh, the response to that is you can't. It is against the rules, um, as cited by some guy in a book. But Wolfram Math World is citing this guy's words as the clear explanation for what happens if you divide by zero. And the answer is you can't. It is against the rules. Even in fields other than real, other than the real numbers, division by zero is never allowed. Um, so the answer, as as cited by uh, the authority of mathematics for division by zero is that you can't, and it is against the rules. Um, so to me, that's basically just a taboo. Um, and it's a taboo to the world of mathematics. It is a taboo to divide by zero. It is against the rules. Don't even try it. Um, and because it's a taboo, it's something that math doesn't even want to think about or explain or try to expand on, expound on, whatever. Uh, they don't, they don't want to expound on something like division by zero because apparently it can't, it can't deal with it. And it's kind of like at the second that you are trying to define division by zero, you're trying to say that it does amount to something other than, hey, don't look at that. That's just a rule that you can't, that's a line that you can't cross. At the point that you are considering division by zero or which is a manifestation of undefinability or anything that is undefinable. Um, um, but at the point you're, you're considering division by zero, according to mathematics, you will be considering something that doesn't exist and it doesn't exist then within the body of mathematics and with within that identity and the academic body of mathematics is not mature enough to address that issue 
they're not a mature enough body. They have not evolved enough to try to take on that because it's just a taboo. It's a place that they don't go. And, um, it's not something that they'll, that they'll be able to address and still be called mathematics. And they're not willing to grow and change their identity in order to include it. Um, and so it's things like that that make undefinability an important area or, or, you know, or it's something worth talking about because that's the thing. It is worth talking about what happens when you divide by zero. It's not just, hey, no, that's nothing because we can address it symbolically. We can write it symbolically. We can see that it exists on a page, but we're not allowed to say that it is, that it is anything. Um, and so I think that that's kind of dumb. So, and there's a lot of things in mathematics that are like that. And pretty much mathematics itself is just adherence to rules. And, uh, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing, that's not a vice that they have all these rules. That's what, that's what keeps it going and keeps it existing the way that it does. But, um, I think there's definitely something to be said about making bodies of knowledge that are more mature and more evolved than mathematics and trying to contribute to those, such as a body of knowledge that deals with undefinition rather than declaring it to be out of the realm of what's speakable. Um, yeah, so those are some things about undefinability, and I, I wanted to include that about, about mathematics and uh, I guess sort of infer that that's kind of the direction of the podcast anyways to challenge things that are presumably unchallengeable like the rules of mathematics mathematics is just a finite body of knowledge and should be challenged um and uh if the authorities of mathematics don't want to challenge it then it's up to regular people um so that is my podcast tune in or don't tune in ever again and it will be me doing the podcast even if you don't tune in it'll still be me saying all of it um and i don't know how to end this unfortunately i don't know how to say okay done so i just keep going on and on bye